the Barb, the Omega Chad who led Diablo 2's launch marketing. When it came to the character select screen, who'd they put at the center? This beast. Everyone has their favorite memories of plotting out a build for this class. To become an immortal king, whirlwinding through hordes of demons, shouting your foes to death as a bard barb, and of course, any good magic finder knows that he's king of the pits. But in the world of Sanctuary, where magic reigns supreme, to go fast, you actually have to hit your enemies. In a place where monsters far outlevel you, and with a character constrained to yelling, throwing, and swinging akimbo, what good are massive biceps and Olympian level high jump skills? Can a man whose race is literally named by the ancient Greeks after peoples they could only hear say bar bar when they spoke really stack up against someone that controls the elements or even a fiend who can raise the dead? Sadly, when it comes to Diablo 2 speedruns, the barbarians, well... I'd say Barb's very technical speedrun. That's kind of what I think of. Like very high difficulty in terms of just the melee mechanics in the game are super weighted against the player. And I also think about how terrible he can be to get through the game uh, just early on with, you know, just trying to, to melee in this game here. It's really tough to get behind that concept, like not having that AOE and like struggling through the first 30 levels all the way to the, the Warcry build is like really painful every time. All right, the clone is dead. The clone is dead. Go, 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 go. Oh man, I have to go to the bathroom, die. <laughs> Of the seven classes in Diablo 2, the Barbarian seems at first glance to be the most straightforward. Just run around whacking stuff, right? Looking through the three skill trees reinforces this view, with skills covering mastery of melee and ranged weapons for damage and attack rating buffs, war cries for buffs and debuffs, as well as party support, and finally, combat skills for how exactly to whack a monster. Now, in a world of foul demons and beasts. I have to say, simply swinging a flail or two at a giant monster doesn't exactly seem that effective. While this seems obvious to us now, it wasn't so in the early days of Diablo 2, and the Barb was the front and center hero at launch. If you go back to Diablo 2 1.0, the Barbarian was actually probably the best character in the game. Mana potions couldn't be bought, so, you know, things like that, you had to be really like wary of and all of this. And then even just for the other classes, like Hammerdens were terrible. And I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that was not as good back then. And so the Barbarian who could just run out there and hit things did a lot better. And then eventually when you got to Whirlwind and he hit every single frame of the Whirlwind, which 25 FPS, right? So you'd get 25 proc hit or chances to hit there. It was so good. So the Barbarian actually used to be amazing in this game, probably the best character in 1.0. And then slowly over time, as they started buffing things and adding synergies and changing up, you know, monster HP levels and adding in potions and, you know, health pots and all, or mana pots and all of that stuff. Eventually the Barbarian just kind of slowly weakened himself until he became, you know, kind of the bottom of the barrel choice for it, unfortunately. Numerous buffs and debuffs across the first half decade of the game's existence took the barb from a whirling death machine down to a guy who was tough enough to punch a fallen to death and not much more. Now, don't get me wrong, killing a demon with a single punch is still pretty impressive, but it's not exactly tearing open volcanic vents beneath the feet of his adversaries charring them to the bone. It turns out that in a format that's prone to power creep, 
A big dude has a cap on how realistic it is to beef him up, whereas something as intangible as magic has no such limits. So where does this leave the barb in modern D2 speedrunning? Well, it's pretty much exactly as you'd expect, slogging your way through the field one monster at a time. And this is exactly what makes the barb a captivating run. Technical skill comes to the fore in a way not nearly as visible in other runs, where monster positioning becomes critical, item knowledge and flexibility is amped up, and simply knowing maps is not enough. Possibly the most frustrating part of melee-based characters in D2 is missing half the time because of the god-awful chance to hit mechanics in the game. This miss-miss-miss-hit streak only becomes more obvious as you get later in the game, as the weight of the level difference between your character and enemy monsters starts overwhelming the hit chance formula. Since in a normal speedrun, you want to spend as little time leveling as possible, and runners are always fighting Bale at level 21, the base chance to hit is tiny, and so a strategy is needed to overcome this challenge. For the Barb, this can be achieved through both skills and gear. On the skills front, Battlecry can be incredibly useful, lowering monster defense by 50% while also reducing their physical damage output by 25%. This both makes monsters easier to hit and makes it easier to keep swinging at them without the need to run away and heal. For weapons, the rune word Malice is incredibly useful. With significant reductions to monster defense per hit, it only takes a few swings to whittle even Bale down to basically zero defense. While this doesn't fully outweigh the level differences in this particular case, it still does a heck of a lot to bridge the gap. The battle cry method does require sacrificing some damage and attack rating, so often runners prefer to go for Malice over battle cry but both play their part in the history of runs. Unfortunately, this puts a large burden on finding runes and can mean the Barb spends a lot of time running the Countess over and over in Act 1 for her guaranteed drops. Outside of these basics, a Barb runner will make sure to get Leap and Leap Attack. As perhaps the most magical abilities the class has, these massively boost maneuverability in a class that desperately needed something special. Where other classes get frustrated in the Arcane Sanctuary, for barbs, it's a simple hop. Of course, runners will invest in a mastery for the bonus to attack rating and damage. This is almost always mace mastery, since the DPS on the mace weapon types is about the best you can get, even before their 50% bonus against undead. Seriously, for the start of the game, Scepter's OP. To speed up their DPS further, they'll go into double swing at level 6, and then it's kind of a mix of investing further into double swing to reduce mana costs, or into bash or mastery for more damage, all depending on the runner and how they're feeling really. The combination of flexibility and technicality on this run really does make it something else. An example of why I like Barb is, you know, you can get really technical with it. Like you can really set up the run for that, you know, any item that, any weapon that drops, you can utilize it because you've thought through it. Whereas every other run, it's like, do you get FCR, do you not? Do you get run walk, do you not? And then it just comes down to how well you can use the two or three spells that you typically use. In the long arc of Diablo 2 speedrunning history, perhaps unsurprisingly, the barb has been pretty neglected. While early segmented runs of the Assassin, Sorceress and Druid had been completed in the Speed Demos archive era, the Barb was only ever theorized in a short topic that never went anywhere. The time sink was just too intimidating. Even after Lav kicked off the RTA era in 2013, the Barb languished. The only person to ever even attempt a Barb speedrun, Indrek, found it so painful he gave up during the bail fight after many, many hours. Finally, in late March 2015, a relatively new runner stepped up to the plate to take on what others wouldn't. Mr. Lama SC was on the scene, and he had the grit and tenacity to see it through. In a five hour slog, he put the barb run on the board and set a precedent for many to build on after him. Yes! I've got to recommend anyone who's interested in the history of D2 speedruns go back and watch this run. In your face. Some things that seem blindingly obvious to us today stick out like a sore thumb, in a very amusing way. How long until that clone disappears? 
Yeah, honestly, if we're sub five hours, I'd say I feel pretty good. Isn't the clone supposed to disappear after like a certain amount of time? Not to mention, who would ever think to invest in iron skin for defense? Still, Llama got the basics down, getting a malice and running with flails, and pushed it all the way to the end, even with a massive crash that cost him about 40 minutes of progression just over four hours into the run. Wait, what? What just happened? Even so, he still kept at it. You just gotta finish it, you know? I mean, there's definitely the questions of like, do I just stop, you know? But that was the first run I think I'd ever done of the Barbarian. And so, you know, like you're at bail, you can't just get all the way at bail and stop. It's like, you know what? I'll come in, I'll finish it. I can run a faster time later, but like, I wanna have a complete run here so I can just get the record, but then beat it later and say, here's where we have all these improvements. So it's kind of fun to get a record that has space for improvement because then you know the next time you play, if you're on a good pace and you're at that same time at bail, you're like, as long as I don't crash this time, I'll save this much time on it. And so, you know, you, you feel good about all those little upgrades because there's just, you know, all sorts of stuff that does happen. And so, there was now a benchmark for someone to beat. Then, the inevitable happened. The German speed machine, Teo 1904, came on the scene. When I started diving into the saucers, then Lama became interested in running and I don't know we always had like some connection that yeah does friends and it was just like friendly competition for us while our communities basically tried to like push us to to go faster <laughs> despite a couple of early hiccups he knew the record was definitely achievable and on top of the basic malice and stealth strats that Lama had used he brought a new trick to the table poison gas potions. Throwing potions are commonly overlooked in D2, and for good reason, they generally suck. But combined with their 100% chance to hit, and the area of effect damage that the barb can't get anywhere else, bringing these into the speedrun drastically improved the early game, especially the many, many tower runs needed to get the very rare L rune from Countess. Bringing a friend along for Act 3 and 4 crowd control, he cruised to a new world record time of 2 hours, 58 minutes and 32 seconds. It was pretty typical in 2015 for records to all fall into the same pattern of cycling back and forth between Llama and Teo. Teo would lower the time, then Llama would take it back, and so on, and Barb was no exception. Five weeks later, Llama would take the record below 250, largely through avoiding some of the bad RNG Teo had, as well as the always amazing run-walk boost off a Lucky Hisaurus boots drop. And then, the craziest thing I've ever seen in D2 speedrunning history happened. Nightfall accidentally stumbled his way into the Barbarian world record history with what can only be considered the most godly item RNG ever seen in a D2 speedrun. So, I would normally run Source and Assassin when I did Diablo 2 speedruns. You know, rarely would I ever do any of the other uh, characters, <laughs> especially Barbarian. You know, I never touched him. Um, even on my Diablo 2 speedrunning guide, I just, uh, I made him a joke. Uh, so, of course, yeah, chat's always asking, you know, when's the barb run? When's the barb run? Um, well, one day I was feeling it, and I was like, uh, let's try something different. Mix it up, you know, let's have some fun. I had no idea what the current strats were. I did no research. I didn't know what the world record was. I just, I went live and I said, let's do it. Let's go for round. So everything's going well in act one. Um, too well. <laughs> I had crush lanes drop. I'm pretty sure it was like the first Countess run. Uh, yeah, I started panicking. You know, chat's panicking. I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? You know, I know that this is literally never going to happen again in my life. Um, so it just went from goofing around, having fun, to, you know, suddenly it's like this, you know, serious situation. I had no idea what I was doing. 
While Nightfall had previously been a record holder on both the Sorceress and Assassin classes, he hadn't ever played through on the Barb. So of course, on his first ever attempt at the class, he got not one, not two, but three amazing item drops, all in Act 1. First, Death's Sash, which grants cannot be frozen and saves mucking around with thawing potions, typically saving a minute or so in the Diablo and Bale fights alone. Then, he got the unique Chain Boots Treads of Cthon. These grant a massive 30% boost to run walk speed, as well as a little extra life, always appreciated. And finally, the big one, Crush Flange. This innocuous mace grants a massive 33% chance of a crushing blow, a completely useless description that isn't explained anywhere in the game manuals, but nonetheless it reduces the target's health by 12.5% every time it's procced. On top of the boost to fire resistance this gives you to help through the Chaos Sanctuary, this weapon is any barb runner's dream. With Mr. Llama in the chat and barely knowing how to play the character, Nightfall stumbled through to secure the least likely world record in the timeline. People often ask how much of a Diablo record is luck and how much is skill, and certainly Nightfall had a good amount of basic skill at Diablo 2 coming into the run, but I'm confident in saying that this run is the pinnacle of luck playing a role in any of Diablo 2's records. Yeah, of course he'd take it back. The stealthless run. Putting RNG back in its place a mere 8 hours later, Llama left work, booted up Diablo and took the record back. He didn't even get stealth. Pure technical skill carried the barb to new heights with a time of 2 hours, 44 minutes and 14 seconds. And I think those two runs really show that, like, no, you could get the god run of cannot be frozen, crushing blow, and faster run walk boots, which is literally like three amazing things for that run. And I was so jealous watching him run it and have no clue, but still just like getting it all. Um, you can get all that, but still, if you don't have all of those tile map, you know, all of the different tiles and all of that knowledge of that, if you still don't know the best way to engage with monsters as a barbarian, who you want to fight, who you don't, how to, you know, work through the chaos that's dense, anything like that, you're going to lose all that time back. And so while, yes, that can speed up and save you tons of time, the skilled player is still going to be able to, you know, generally just beat that. And that's kind of how I feel it is with a lot of the runs in Diablo 2. From here, the next six months would bring three more records. First, Tay would come back with a new strategy of having Tal 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 in a flail to get an extra layer of damage over time alongside the open wounds bleed damage from Malice, greatly assisting his boss fights and getting the first sub 230 run with a little help from Claglaw's gloves and Hasara's boots he got from farming Andariel as he tried to replicate Nightfall's Crush Flange drop. Llama would come back with a 226 ditching the Andy runs and getting a little help for the bail fight from Hawkmail's Cannot Be Frozen as well as some nice AI RNG. Finally, Teo would come back and smash the record once again, dropping it down to 2 hours, 17 minutes and 35 seconds, securing the coveted 7 out of 7 normal difficulty world records, one for each class. While he had a couple of nice drops, this was mostly down to improving on the fundamentals, efficient progress, making more use of choking gas potions in Act 3, and using new techniques for funneling enemies. From here it'd be a long time until a new Barbarian world record. As Teo stepped back from the scene, few wanted to try their hands at the slowest class. Even Nightfall's hardcore record stood for another year, with no one to challenge it other than Teo. So, after a year of constant back and forth between record holders, Teo's record would continue to stand. And stand and stand. And because it was pushed down as far as we thought as possible, like now we know better, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, most people were like, there's no point in hunting this. There's other records that are easier, quote unquote, to get. So we just go for those now. I think that was the general feeling amongst the speedrunners. And then Blazer at some point came in and was like, I love the Barbarian, I want to push the Barbarian. So 
yeah, let's push it. <laughs> in terms of the normal barb speed run, kind of, I've been running hell hardcore for a little while. I think I completed one or two before finally switching to other runs and I kind of took what I learned from hardcore hell runs and kind of applied some of them to like the ones that you could apply in a normal run and I went from there. After a long drought from Barb Records, a new crop of runners were stepping into the void. Stepping down from hell hardcore barbarian speedruns, Blazer Flamewing would be the first to reinvigorate the category. He knew the class well and would bring his insights across to the normal difficulty speedrun. In the record history timeline, Blazer was the first to really bring in some of the advanced strategies on the Barb, using much neglected war cries to great effect. I've watched a couple of like the higher leaderboard runs and it was like they're not doing this they're not doing that like taunt and battle cry for example there's a lot that i can see uh to improve upon here and from what i've learned in my hell hardcore runs i kind of utilized a lot of that using taunt to uh, get enemies closer um or using taunt to kite waves out um using battle cry to both like increase the chance it takes to hit them and also reduces the amount of damage, so I'm using less potions, or I don't have to retreat nearly as often, and I can kill those mobs faster. He also maximized crowd control capabilities with a boatload of chance to cast Frost Nova gear, slowing down packs and making fights much more manageable. But what really made the difference was the Crush Flange that dropped from Andariel. We gotta run, we gotta run, oh boy do we have a run. The fact that it was ethereal limited him to only using it on bosses, but really the knockback on the item can be quite annoying for regular monsters, so if anything the bonus 50% damage granted by the ethereality was beneficial. Where bail fights usually take anywhere from 8 to 12 minutes, blazers only took 4 and brought in the first normal barb record in 3 years with a time of 2 hours 12 minutes and 34 seconds. Mother this was the starting point for a new wave of runners to shake up the category and push it to limits theorized years earlier. Around this time, a new runner appeared on the scene by the name of Bender Meets Fry, and right away he started making an impression. I mean, Bender is a cool story, man. It's like crazy how much he yeah, invented in the speedruns and inno innovated in the speedruns. Like, how many things he changed. I thought I already changed so many things, but when he came in, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I did not expect so many things. Like, I remember I used to watch Bender particularly, and I just thought, he, he doesn't play particularly better than anyone else. Why is he getting these... Why does he world record every time he turns his stream on? I just think that's really fascinating that effectively this one guy comes in and changes so many strats like changes the picture of so many classes and uh, categories of speedruns in june 2019 he'd secure the hardcore world record with a time of two hours 16 minutes just like blazer he made full use of the barb's abilities taunting and using battle cry as well as focusing on super minor details like exactly how many monsters he'd need for the experience to optimize his runs Pretty much min-maxing every second. He kept experimenting and pushing his time, and two weeks later he slashed the record. <sighs> nice. With liberal use of gas potions, expert knowledge of the impacts of plus damage items, and the same cannot be frozen hawk mail that Llama had benefited from years earlier, this run was a heck of a thing. But the real game changer was the use of the Nadir rune word. This much maligned rune word had long been neglected in speedruns, with most prioritizing fire resistance in their helm. But Bender is a runner who isn't afraid to experiment, and the Cloak of Shadows charges available from the rune word presented a massive opportunity. Where previous runners had to clear basically all the enemies around the seals in the Chaos Sanctuary, with the simple cast of a spell Bender was able to render basically everyone completely inert saving minutes with basically zero risk. What was that I was saying about magic being OP earlier? 
Bender would continue to grind and experiment, coming up with crazy strategies like using a trick called swap casting, which switches animations between spells, to swap slowly swinging a giant lumbering maul with simply shouting and dealing massive damage at pace. Combine this with his discovery of an amazing cheese spot for the Diablo fight, and you've got yourself a hardcore record. After a while, Bender would give up on his sub two hour goal and move on to other categories, occasionally dipping back in as he felt the urge, and to keep another new and promising runner, McCaub, on his toes. It would take a year, but in July 2020, things really fell into place for an absolutely insane run, and a record that still stands today. Nell Striker. Where Crushflange was a dream, Nell Striker was godly. Getting rid of the annoying knockback while keeping great resistances and crushing blow? This thing is just wild. Where Sub 2 Hour had frustrated him in the past, this was a shoe in. Every other piece of luck was just icing on the cake. Abandoning the battle cry strats and going all in on damage, he demolished Bale and the old world record in a time of 1 hour. 53 minutes and 42 seconds. Nine minutes faster than an already crazy fast pace. Nice. GG. This combination of gear and skill left the record standing in the Lord of Destruction leaderboards to this day. In the year that followed, Bender's main competition in the barb category, Macabre, would take the hardcore record below two hours without any crushing blow, but the softcore time was just too good. That's probably one of the one of the best LOD runs, I think. Like, you, you can say it's just normal runs or normal on hell. It's probably one of the hardest to beat, in in my opinion. I tried. I put in probably a hundred hours straight of that run, and nothing. However, a remaster was on the horizon, and once everyone got their computers up to spec things were ready to step up yet another level. With the general increase in interest in Diablo 2, Mr. Lama SC was channeling his passion for speedrunning the game into a sponsored race series. The overall event, I just wanted to create some fun speedrunning, you know, I, I still love speedrunning again, you know, um, and I just wanted to create a fun event for to get people interested in speedrunning, to get speedrunning, you know, going again. It kind of had slowed down, I felt like, before that. And so I wanted to kind of just get runners back into the groove of speedrunning and competing. And, you know, so I felt like, hey, if I can just do this arena league and throw up, you know, some, just a, a bunch of events and it's just speedrun this character, speedrun this character this week, whatever stuff, uh, you know, people can just, go crazy with it and, and have a fun back and forth competition. And they did, and they were really great. You know, it was it was very awesome to to watch who would grind to what, who would just say, never mind, I'm done grinding here, you know, and like all that stuff. Each week would see a cash prize for whoever could post the fastest time for a player's one normal speed run of a particular class. And competition at the top levels was fierce. That was a pretty rigorous competition. Like we were all playing out of our minds. Those who consistently were the top five, like we really, really uh, became a lot better throughout that competition. Like it, it, it made all of our skills just so much more honed in. Um, I remember walking into it the first week was Assassin and I was like, I really struggled to get top five. And you know, in LOD I have one of the world records, and then I have second place in the other one. 
So I, I walked into it thinking, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna top three this you know easily, and I might even take it all, you know, if I get the right RNG. And then I got in, and I was like really scampering just to get fifth place. After a few weeks of warm up, it finally came time for the barb run. And while all the runners were going to put in their best, everyone knew that this was really a battle between Macalb, the man who had every barb record except softcore players won, and Bender, the existing champion. You know, Bender, Bender plays a mean barb, but you could tell that we were like way ahead of everyone else. And in all reality, Bender really hasn't played that much barb, like not nearly as much as me. And uh, you can just tell where he just thrives with having number one, just he can play anything and be a world record contender. And two, just uh, how, how much, I guess, better a barb just the both of us were. I, I don't remember where everyone landed, but I feel like we were at least five minutes ahead of whoever came in third place. Bender would fire the first salvo with great gear, clean maps, and exceptional gameplay. Some early XP shrines sped him to the critical level 6 breakpoint, unlocking gas potions and from there he was done with Countess after only 27 minutes. With no malice he showed that pivotal flexibility that is key in barb runs, shifting to using steel and battle cry strats, as well as making the most of a combat shrine he found while progressing to hugely increase his damage output. He blitzed through the game and running into the throne room he was already at an amazing pace. And on top of this, there was something weird going on in the remaster. I, I can't figure out why, but the Barb is like a stronger class in D2R. Things like we'd killed Bale faster. Like I think I killed Bale in like five and a half minutes. Whereas an LOD, my best run without crushing blow was like seven, seven and a half minutes. And that's with a Warhammer with weapon speed bug. Probably better gear, like probably had a blood fist or something that adds a lot of damage. So I, I don't get it. It's something's something connects more or something does more damage in D2R, but it's a lot easier to play in D2R. With D2R's faster bail fights, running into bail at only an hour and 46 minutes into the run, it looked like a contender to beat even the old Nell Striker record, even without any crushing blow. As Bale let out his final scream, the timer stopped half a minute ahead of the old insane record. But Macabre wasn't going to let go of this opportunity to claim a win in the series. Saving every frame he could, he was at a disadvantage to Bender's run. He had malice, but little else going for him for the first three acts. It was only just before Mephisto that things started to turn. First, a sweet Warhammer with great damage stats. Then the seal boss Infector of Chaos dropped 20 faster run walk boots. Coming into the bail fight, he was a minute and a half behind Bender, but the extra DPS from the Warhammer carried him through, securing a time just 20 seconds faster. World record. We got it! We got it! But Bender wasn't going to let him get away with it that easy. Over the remaining few days of the competition, he'd cut the record twice more. Bringing in McCalb's use of the Warhammer, and with the help of some friendly folks in chat, he got the record down to a mere 1 hour 50 minutes. No crazy run walk boots or charms, no crushing blow, what had started as a 5 hour run had now been cut by 60% and Bender took the victory for the week. What's crazy is, this run isn't even on the speedrun.com leaderboards. But while this is where the players won record should stand today, it wasn't the end for the normal Barb speedrun. At the launch of Diablo 2 Resurrected, a small cadre of the top runners had taken the opportunity to redefine what the default category for runs was. They moved away from the players won precedent set way back at Speed Demo's archive, carrying through the early years of Lav, Nightfall, Teo and Llama. Community leaders Indrek and Kano instead shifted to the typically faster Players X category. One where the player could simulate online play through a text command, increasing monster health pools, damage, defense, and critically, experience granted. This allowed leveling up characters much faster, spending less time hunting and fighting monsters, and more time focused on progressing through the game. Strangely though, the Barbarian Player's X time had always lagged behind. 
Where classes like the Sorceress or Druid could see time saves of up to 10% in PX, a combination of lack of attention and the Barbarian's extremely limited melee mechanics had left him in a position where the player's X time was perennially slower than the player's 1 time. Even after the launch of Diablo 2 Resurrected, this crazy zoomed in run from Macabre was the PX world record. No one was interested in challenging it when there was so much other fertile ground to cover. But after the race series, Kano was ready. Having wet his appetite for playing classes other than the Druid, he started pushing their players' X times down. Record after record, he started to take over the leaderboards, just like Teo had done in 2015. In early 2022, he was 6 out of 7, and a critical change in patch 2.4 would enable him to get the Barb record and secure dominance. Before 2.4, you needed like a Malice or a Steel, and then like an Ith rune, maybe two, and then Stealth. But that's like a lot of runes, right? That's like you're talking about like eight runes, and uh, after the third, I need I need to count the runes to make sure. Yeah, I think that was eight. Um, but somewhere in that in that area, and it's like, well, if you did Countess runs more than like three times. You're like already level 16, 17, and uh, you're going to get penalized. You're literally just running maps at that point they, that are unnecessary. So the runs take a lot longer if you try to get go for the weapons, which means you have to play very greedy, which means you have an amazing Act 1, Act 2, even Act 3. But once you get to Act 4 and 5, it's like, okay, well, you're going to lose like eight minutes because you don't have these two weapons. But then 2.4 comes along. And suddenly you have the leap attack, and it's like, well, you can find anything that has big numbers. Not, you don't even need big numbers. You can find anything. The changes to leap attack mechanics as part of patch 2.4 gave the Barb something he desperately needed, a source of area of effect damage. While he already had some of this through the Singer build using Warcry, that was only feasible for Hell runs. And yes, I know you wanted this video to be about the Hell Barb record. Let's move on, shall we? This change also massively buffed the Barb's DPS. Like, seriously, watch this Duriel fight. This is as fast as a sorceress. Where once the Barb was limited by his damage output in getting an effective player's X run going, such a barrier no longer existed, and runners like Bender, Kano, 327X, and Macalb all noticed. As King of the Barb, Macalb was going to take a stand and set a high bar for Kano to pass. As soon as the conversation in Kano's Discord turned to taking the Barb record, Macabre was there defending his turf. He'd already set the record for the Hell category using the new leap attack strats a couple of weeks earlier, so bringing these down to the much shorter normal category was a no-brainer. With all the extra experience granted in players' X runs, there's a huge reduction in time spent farming the Countess. With 2-3 runs max here before you get overleveled, Macabre pushed on without a stealth, or even really anything to make a good weapon. Still, he was absolutely smashing the old players one times, dealing damage like you wouldn't believe. But when it got to the Diablo fight, the challenge of the new strategy started to show. Dodging the lightning hose is extremely difficult with Leap Attack's extra long animation, and using Bender's cheese spot was off the cards. Still, he pushed through, and while still the longest fight of any class, the Bale fight only took three minutes as long as it had taken Bender with Nell Striker. In the realm of Macau Bruns, a 138 was kind of rough around the edges, but it was a solid precedent for the category. Still, Kano was determined to secure 7 out of 7, and with a little bit of focus, he managed to grab the record a couple of hours later. Unfortunately, Kano is terrible at highlighting his videos. And so, of course, the brief period where he had 7 out of 7 normal records is known only to speedrun nerds. There's not even any record of what the time was, Kano. Anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter because literally while Kano was completing his run, Macalb was at it again and smashed his earlier PB. This time opting for a Maul as his main weapon to really beef up his damage. Getting stealth on his second Countess run and with a bit more of a handle on the Diablo fight, Macalb slapped Kano off the 7 out of 7 perch after holding it for a mere 15 minutes setting a new record of 1 hour, 32 minutes, and 33 seconds. And that's where things stand today. With the shift to PX, there still seems like there's opportunity to improve times, perhaps getting below 90 minutes. 
And with the D2R team actively working on class balance, who knows how things will go. In the Diablo speedrun community, it's pretty common for viewers to ask how much is luck and how much is skill. And looking at the history of barb records, there's certainly a few pivotal moments where you can point to great luck. But in the end, if you think about it, what the history really is, is a testament to the power of skill. Crushing Blow might save you 10 minutes on boss fights. Faster Run Walk might save you 6 minutes on running through maps. But skill? Skill saves hours. You see throughout the history of the Barbarian speedrun is just how many strategies have become implemented and how it's changed so wildly. You know, I mean, it's been complete 180s of what you're looking for, what you care about, what you don't, what's good, what's bad. It's all over the place. So I think it's been really fun to kind of watch that history of it grow. While compared to other classes in solo speedruns, the Barb may be, you know, but when it comes to understanding and appreciating the improvements in D2 speedruns overall, I think it's pretty great.